cold. I'm feeling gush of water as I bent forwards. Some trickles down my back, the shampoo blurs my focus. No matter how much she lathers, she still scrubs my scalp harder. Why? I can't even feel my scalp after. My sister saunters past the bathroom door many times, breaking into fits of laughter. I remember. Smile at me now. Breaking into fits of laughter. Now I'm angry, but don't worry, because after me, you're next, sweet sister. First chapter over, I face my next adversary. Yes, another. That blasted afro pick hair dryer. <laughs> the heat forever creeping higher. The broken teeth of the afro pick scraping my already tender scalp. <laughs> the broken teeth of the afro pick scraping my already tender scalp. I tried to bite my lip. Ouch! Oops, it slipped out. I flinch. So now the consequence. The hairbrush descends with an almighty doosh. Oh, snap, Uncle, snap, Uncle, sit still. <laughs> but the pain is immense. Oh Lord, why must you punish me? Whatever did I do to be given hair so nappy? I'm sorry, forgive me. Just give me hair that silky. Both the wind and my fingers can roam freely. Oh, to be happy. But instead, I guess I'm just nappy. <laughs> the Ghanaian community. It's this figure that they expect women to magically acquire when they reach womanhood. You know what I'm talking about, you know the Coca-Cola bottle <laughs> shape. Yeah? It's a thing of beauty, yes, if it's natural, it's a thing of beauty. Um, but what if you don't, if you're not shaped like that? Does that make you any less of a woman? For years I used to go to these family functions and the aunties would say, ah, you're so skinny. Eat, eat, eat. No, this is how I'm built. This is how I'm built. And it gives you some uh, complexes it can do as a woman about what sexy is and what it is to be a woman. There's more than one type of woman. Okay, I'm just rambling now, so let me just read it this thing. <laughs> Voluptuous, curvaceous, plus size, thick, fuller, figured woman. I admire the way your excess flesh equates to excessive sexiness. The way your meat decides to hang from your bones. A structure that causes male hormones to flow directly around the erogenous zones. The hysteria so easily caused by the extended curvature of your fleshy derriere. It appears to defy gravity as it just sits there. <laughs> My heart genuinely sings at the fact that despite being gawked at and possibly referred to as fat throughout adolescence, your confidence remains intact. And this is solidified by the countless pairs of eyes that hungrily devour your thighs and mentally suckle at the nipples that punctuate your full cleavage. Your sensuality penetrated by their desires and your ability to toy with them steadily stoke in the fire. And then, there's me. <laughs> With an upturned nose, you say dismissively, Oh, you're so skinny. I see you pitifully size up my thighs with your judgmental eyes and wonder why at night women like me cry. It's because we're called <gasps> skinny. I promise it's not me. I swear I do eat. In fact, I love food. Regardless of my mood, I can happily chomp away, hungry or not. <laughs> Just know that when serving up my plate, be sure to scrape the pot. <laughs> Despite what you think, I am not the one pushed to the brick that excuses herself from the table, casually checks the vicinity of the ladies, and shoves my index finger down the slender throat whilst poised over a sink. No, that's not me. Not content to just think, you verbalise. You need to put on weight. You need to eat. If you eat so much, where does it all go? Well, I don't know. The truth is, my mum's side of the family is incredibly slim and my dad's side consists of mainly petite women, but then there I go again, justifying. Why am I made to feel as if I am sinning just because I am slim? Do you view me as less of a woman because my proportions are lesser than those of a fuller figured woman? Because my hip to waist ratio fell to spew the measurements of a figure that sounds right to you? Ladies? Fellas, what is your definition of sexy? Is little old me granted access to this category? Or has a requirement for a bigger backside excluded me? 
Many women like me are sat in their rooms, bookmarking magazines, ready to sell their wombs for what their culture expects them to aspire to be. So they do just that. <coughs> Consume ridiculous amounts of food when they clearly don't need it. Cakes, biscuits, chocolate, ebba, curry, goat, love all of it down their gullet. In the quest for childbearing hits, then a dress with a Kardashian or Beyonce-like fit. Then the truth <coughs> hits home. A land that creates a throne for this woman deemed as healthy, with no visible bones. But why should I condone the name throne? If I refer to you as overweight or, God forbid, fat. <laughs> All hell would break loose, I'll tell you that. But you call me skinny, you say there's nothing of me. Your words render me unworthy of femininity. It's still abuse. I am not, see me? I am not your school bully, not me. Full of figured woman, voluptuous lady. We're not all built the same and I am not the enemy. We all have insecurities, you don't know my story, so please refrain from ever calling me skinny. <laughs> she doesn't know. She doesn't know. She doesn't know that you anticipate bumping heads at a chance meeting. That when waiting in the arranged meeting place, you can decipher the distinct pattern of her footsteps hitting the concrete amongst the masses of souls engaged in the same activity. She doesn't know that you can distinguish the difference between her MAC raisin and sweet as cocoa blusher colours. That you bite your lip every time you want to compliment her for fear of her reading too deeply into your words. She knows most of your anxiety when she sta stands or sits too close to you, that your legs shake uncontrollably when intimate thoughts cross your mind, that the close proximity paves way for your urge to place your hands where you know you shouldn't. She knows not of your need to abruptly change subject mid-sentence when she unwittingly looks at you in that way. For fear of falling into a state where your lips become dry and your tongue becomes heavy under the weight of your anxiety. You never tell her that you prefer it when she wears her hair that way instead of this way. You never told her that you've noticed that her waist is smaller than you remember. I mean, you wouldn't want to offend her or make her self-conscious or insecure about how she may have looked before. You neglect to express your gratitude at the fact that despite it sounding cliché, her smile truly lights up the room. You neglect to say that you think it's adorable the way her nose wrinkles when she's deep in thought. You neglect to say that even though she can't sing, you appreciate every strange falsetto and raspy melody. She doesn't know that when your demeanor appears cool and steely, it's because your mind is elsewhere. And <laughs> she doesn't know that the last, last point is in fact a lie, and that she's enough distraction to melt away your armor. She doesn't know that you sneaked a peek that day. You know, that day when she bent down to pick up her keys whilst wearing her too low top, gosh. She doesn't know that due to your fine-tuned cock-blocking skills that James no longer frequents on her cool waiting during your epically long phone calls. <laughs> she is oblivious to the fact that you secretly toy with the idea that you could be her everything. But since you can't quite give her that, you'll spare her the, the turmoil and disappointment of experiencing anything less. So for now, she doesn't no. Or does she? <laughs> hey.